you're a business owner and you're trying to take care of your staff and your clients and your family and make money and pay the bills and doing all the things that we do, we often forget why we got into this industry in the first place. And I have hairdressers come up to me all the time and say, I've just lost it. I hate it. I've lost my passion. I'm tired. I'm miserable. You know, I just can't do it anymore. How do I get my passion back? And I don't think it's that we've lost our passion, I think it's that we're tired, right? It's just a hard, sometimes we work harder instead of working smarter. And we just get tired and we feel burnout. And because we are creative people, we need to be stimulated all the time and we get burnt out. So the reason I got into the industry is when I was a kid in Australia, um, I was a misfit. I didn't fit in anywhere. And I was incredibly overweight, and all the kids at school were little cows and made fun of me and were miserable. And that's right, they're laughing somewhere right now. Um, and I really just didn't fit in. And the thing that I used to do every week was go to the salon with my mum when she had a hair blow dry. It was the most amazing thing, because I'd walk into the salon. First of all, the smell was just intoxicating for me. It smelled like... Hair dryers and lacquer, because it was back in the day with real lacquer that you'd squeeze out and it was thick and dark. It was like caramel, stick all over the mirrors, and it was just delicious. And I would look at people, because I would sit there and watch clients come in. Clients would always come in, and the kind of shoulders would be hunched, head would be down, shuffle in a bit, and they'd be miserable. And you would see during the course of their visit, shoulders would go back, boobs would come out a little bit, little smile in the corner of their eye, a little smile on their face. And by the time they walked out, even if they didn't feel it for the rest of the day, for at least a couple of moments, they felt beautiful. And they felt good about themselves. And that was because of a hairdresser. And that was the most powerful thing for me, as a kid that didn't fit in anywhere, and was struggling to find my way, to see women transform, not just physically transform with what was happening with their hair, but transform their attitude because of a hairdresser, I wanted in. That was so powerful to me. The other thing that I just thought was amazing were hairdressers were these misfits, as I believe we are, and I love that about us. We're not like other people. Do you ever talk to non-hairdressers and you're just like, I just, we speak two different languages. We're hairdressers, we speak hairdresser, right? We do. We just do. And that's what I love about us. So that's why I got into this industry. For me, I like to share that story to remind all of you sometimes when you're having those days, because you will, or you have that client that you're like, oh, really, Betty, it's you again, that you remember your story and why you came in. So let's talk about what I do now. Um, obviously I've got a TV show, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Um, the thing that I'm proud of is being a hairdresser, that's what I do. And the other part of what I do now is, as well as running a business, go into other people's businesses and help them. So I help them restructure their business, coach them, and walk them through what's going on. The interesting thing is, it doesn't matter where in the world you go, and I'm lucky enough to travel all the time, even countries where they don't speak English and I can't communicate well with people, what we feel as hairdressers, what's happening in our industry, and the struggles that we're feeling in our business are happening in our industry globally, right? So, not that it takes away your problems, but I wanted to make you feel a little bit better that it's a, it's a universal struggle that we're all having at the moment. Who can agree if you've been in this industry for 10 years or more that it's changed completely in the past 10 years? Show of hands. Yeah. Totally. Right? It's a totally different industry sometimes. I wake up and you have to kind of readjust and get to know it again. The trends are totally different. The way people consume our product is totally different. Right? So 10 years ago, the average was the clients were coming into our businesses at least six times a year. Now, they're only, the average, they're coming in 4.7 times to see us. So they've cut back on their visits. They're not coming in to us the same way. The other thing that happened, that happened for multiple reasons, 
One of them are high street stores and different retail areas that are available to people. Online spending and consuming is another thing that's changed. Is clients now used to think of us that we were the luxury. They came and got pampered, they felt good about themselves, they relaxed, they wanted to be looked after, all of those kind of things. Now, we're actually on the to-do list. Right? That's devastating to me. So instead of it's, I'm going to go to the salon or go to the spa and be pampered and taken care of, they actually look at coming to us as a chore. Pick up dog food, go and get dry cleaning, and drop the kids off at soccer practice. That's because, again, consumers have changed. And our product is like any other product, right, that a consumer is looking at. So if you think about what's changed in the marketplace and what has ha happened, really, one of the biggest things is social media. It's a great tool for us, and it's a great way to get our work out there. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. But what it's also done is popped up all of these experts everywhere. Yeah? You ever go on YouTube and look at everyone and everyone's like curling their hair, doing their braid, doing their makeup, right? Did you see the girl that burnt her curl off on YouTube? <laughs> I loved it. Was that not delicious? I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I just kept pressing play over and over and over again. It made me feel so good. See, here's the problem, I, and I actually went to YouTube and I had a meeting with them, and this was extraordinary to me, because I knew that, I knew that YouTube, it's a great vehicle and I love it, and I like to watch it, and all of those things that I'm sure you do as well. But I didn't realize that 97% of the people that are on there and the content they're putting on, they're just novices. So it's your average girl at home that may be great with doing her mascara, or braiding her hair, or using a curling iron, or doing whatever it is that she's showing, but she's not a professional. She's not from our industry. And somehow we gave away our power to her or him, and that person's educating our clients on what the hell they should be doing with their hair, what trends they should be looking at, the right color for them, how they should be wearing their makeup and all the other things, what product they should be buying, and they're not even a bloody hairdresser. That is ridiculous to me. But you see, our clients don't realize that that person's not an expert because they sound like they are, right? There was a study done, and it was a global study, so it looked at people that were coming into the beauty industry and what they were looking for. The number one thing that a client said they wanted, may not seem extraordinary, was value. Number two thing is an expert. Let's talk about the expert. Of course they're coming to us, into our businesses, because we are professionals. They want a service from us, right? But what really sets an expert apart? What makes them totally different to just the next person down the road, or the next one in the next business? Is they know exactly what they're doing. They know how to solve your problems. That's what an expert does. An expert solves your problems. Right? If you go to an expert and they're a doctor, I'm not going to go to a chiropodist because I've got a toothache. I go to an expert. That's why clients are coming into us now. I want you to think about social media and YouTube and Instagram and all the things that are great business building tools for us, but I want you to look at the just overwhelming amount of information that our clients get. Sometimes the trend changes in a day, right? Used to be that we had to wait you know, for the magazines to come out and the season to change, and it took a while. God, in Australia, by the time we got a trend, it was 10 years later sometimes, <laughs> right? It took forever to kind of come along. Now, it's like this. We're watching fashion shows online as they're happening in real time. We're seeing that someone's cutting their hair or taking off a wig or changing something for a movie, and clients are coming in wanting it straight away because a 
paparazzi snapped a picture of them somewhere. So when our clients are so inundated with information and being told what to use, how to use it, why they should use it, what to do, right? That becomes so overwhelming to them that an expert goes, no, 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 no. I'm an expert. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. 